Hello and welcome to Season 3, Episode 3. In this episode, I will tell the history of possibly one of the most innovative and successful aircraft companies, and some say made the most romantic and beautiful aircraft, de Havilland. Geoffrey de Havilland has started his career at the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough as a designer of aircraft and went on to work for the Aircraft Manufacturing Company, otherwise known as Airco. The aircraft designed by Geoffrey de Havilland were prefixed by DH on all their models. They were also agents for, farm, for the Farman Aircraft Company based in France. The DH prefix aircraft accounted for 30% of all Allied aircraft in the war years. The manufacturing base for Airco was Hendon that was becoming a hive of aeronautical activity with a number of other manufacturers basing themselves there or nearby. After the war, although Airco had increased in size and the, the aviation industry had collapsed and Airco was sold to BSA, Birmingham Small Arms, known for its motorbikes, and was lit, liquidated a year later. Airco's founder, George Holt Thomas, helped Geoffrey de Havilland establish the Havilland Aircraft Company by purchasing the assets of Airco. The company was established at Hendon in 1920, but due to lack of space, moved to Stag Lane Aerodrome in Edgware not long afterwards. Geoffrey de Havilland's vision for the company was to concentrate on the burgeoning commercial and private aircraft market rather than the military due to the then Air Minist Ministry's technical procurement procedures which made it a difficult and frustrating market. Initially, de Havilland made little impact on the industry until wealthy businessman Alan Butler invested in it. He also got them to make a DH-37 sporting aircraft. He became chairman in 1924, allowing Geoffrey to concentrate on designing while he ran the business and developed sales, marketing and production. Their engine and propeller manufacturing became successful and were used by other aircraft manufacturers. They also established manufacturing plants in Australia and Canada in the late 1920s. Financial stability and success came with the design and production of the Moth family of aircraft in 1925, of which there were a number of models. By 1930, de Havilland moved to Hatfield, its home, till merging with Hawke of Siddeley in 1962. Hatfield itself was productive until its closure in 1993. In 1934, de Havilland made a private venture and built five DH-88 Comet racers. They were two-seat twin-engined aircraft built specially for the Robertson England to Australia air race. Three entered, two of which came first and second, the third came fourth. It was a record time for that period, 70 hours 54 minutes. First place went to Golf Alpha Charlie Sierra Sierra, named Grosvenor House, that was flown by CWA Scott and Tom Campbell Black. Second place went to Black Magic, Golf Alpha Charlie Sierra Papa, flown by Jim and Amy Mollinson. Amy Mollinson was Amy Johnson, the first lady to fly solo to Australia. Ironically, she also flew in a de Havilland aircraft, a de Havilland gypsy moth, that she named as Jason. De Havilland, like other aircraft manufacturers, had sites in different places of the UK. De Havilland, was namely Leavesden, Hertfordshire, now site of the Harry Potter Studios, and Whitney in Oxfordshire, as well as Hatfield. They now designed and produced other successful line of aircraft that were small airliners. These were the Dragon Rapide and Dragon aircraft. With the dark clouds of war forming over Europe in the late 1930s, de Havilland ventured into the design and production of military types. In 1938, the Air Ministry requested a heavily armed multi-role aircraft by 1940. They even specified 50 aircraft capable of bombing and reconnaissance. De Havilland submitted their design, the DH-98, but it was rejected as being too radical. De Havilland persevered and continued design, design, working in secrecy at nearby Salisbury Hall, now home to the de Havilland Museum. What resulted was possibly de Havilland's most famous aircraft, the Mosquito. The Mosquito was a fast twin-engined aircraft capable of multi-roles including fighter, bomber and reconnaissance at high altitude. It was Britain's fastest aircraft in the war. What also made it special was its construction. Metal was at a premium during the war, but wood was plentiful. Therefore, the construction was primarily wood. This made it easy to fix in battle, and in some cases was lighter than metal. It created a nickname for itself, which was the Wooden Wonder. Nearly 8,000 were produced in total. 
During 1940, de Havilland acquired airspeed aircraft, who, based at Portsmouth, made such aircraft as the Oxford Hawser Glider on console under its own name. It merged fully in 1951 and was completing construction of the de Havilland Vampire. Geoffrey de Havilland had experienced personal tragedy when his second eldest son, John, had a freak mid-air collision over St Albans in a mosquito in 1943. His eldest son, Geoffrey Jr., died while flying the tailless de Havilland 108 Swallow while doing high-speed trials. A short respite from the tragedy followed. The company's chief test pilot, John Derry, is believed to be the first pilot to exceed the sound barrier in a DH-108 Swallow in 1948. However, John Derry and his observer Tony Richards were lost while displaying the DH-110 Sea Vixen at Farnborough in 1952. However, mixed blessings followed, as in 1949, the DH-106 Comet took off from Hatfield and became the world's first pressurised jet airliner. It introduced improved performance and comfort for passengers, and it entered service officially with BOAC in 1952. It reduced transatlantic and other long-distance routes quite markedly. These included flights to New York, Johannesburg, Tokyo, Singapore and Colombo. OK, it may, may be the world's first jet airliner by beating the American Boeing 707 to that crown by a matter of years. But due to a, a number of unforeseen circumstances, the 707 became more successful and the comet never fully recovered. The tragedies, tragedies were later discovered to be a result of metal fatigue. Constant redevelopment and improvements were given to the Comet. Four there were four different models with variations. The Comet 2 was even transferred to the Royal Air Force Air Transport Command, and some were further developed and became the Hawker Siddeley Nimrod. De Havilland was absorbed into Hawker Siddeley in 1962 in the UK. The name does, however, live on in Australia under Hawker de Havilland by creating composite structures for Airbus, Boeing and Bombardier, as well as a number of military projects. The de Havilland Canada name is in the ownership of Bombardier Aerospace. De Havilland Canada, as it was known, made its own aircraft, including the ubiquitous DHC-1 Chipmunk, that was used as the primary trainer for all three services in the UK and on air experience flights by the University Air Squadrons and the Air Cadets. It is the only fixed-wing aircraft to have served in all three services. The other aircraft made in Canada included the Beaver, Otter, Buffalo, Bison, Twin Otter, the Dash 7 and Dash 8. Next time will be the history of Vickers Aircraft Company. Any questions, queries or requests, please email thehangarat at gmail.com. Thank you.